Back to the drawing board for state lawmakers later this month. This week, the governor vetoed the congressional redistricting maps they submitted. The once-a-decade redo of these districts by law and constitutional mandate must be done in a fair and equitable manner for all voters. But in this case, who decides what's fair and equitable? Lawmakers, the governor, or perhaps a judge? Two of the state representatives on the redistricting subcommittee are right here to examine just that. Democrat Kelly Skidmore of Boca Raton, Republican Tom Fabricio of Miramar. Representatives, it is so good to have you with us today. We're, we're good morning. Here. Thank you so much for having us. Tom, good to see you back. And Representative Skidmore, glad to meet you. Uh, Representative Skidmore, you were extremely critical uh, when these two maps were sent to the governor, which he vetoed. Uh, I mean, it's almost unbelievable that, that the legislature would send two maps and say sort of, well, if you don't like the first one, we've got a backup mat here. Uh, uh, what was wrong with that? Well, there were several things wrong with that. Um, the first of which was that was a, uh, an attempt to acquiesce to the governor's will. The House had drawn uh, a set of maps that the House uh, was prepared to stand by. The Senate had also drawn a, a uh, congressional district map that uh, we were willing to go into conference on. The fact that we ended up with the second map is uh, only because of the interference of the governor. So, uh, Tom, the what uh, your there. colleague... Um, what your colleague is I calling. I mean, let me, let me, let me just ask a question before you answer, sure. because what your colleague is calling interference, uh, the governor flat out said what he was looking for has the veto pen. That's what he has. That's what he used. And that was not a surprise, but he actually cited the 14th amendment. He said this, look, it's not constitutional. It violates the 14th amendment. That was his reason. Okay, go. Is he right? <laughs> Well, I got. I got. First, I want to respond to uh, Representative Skidmore's comments about uh, that uh, the majority was acquiescing to the governor's will. Um, we clearly weren't, and it, and and she'll remember the day that we voted on this on the floor. Uh, there were uh, messages about tweets and whatnot about the governor telling us that he was going to absolutely veto the maps if we didn't uh, if we passed the maps that had been presented. So uh, the maps that were passed were not. Certainly, we're not uh, to acquiesce to anything other than uh, what the, the view of the Florida House. Um, the governor has made uh, statements that the maps that we passed are in violation of the Fourteenth Amendment; that they that they don't provide uh, equal protection of the laws. And I think he has he has uh, colorable arguments there. Uh, I mean, I, I look through his uh, memo. I am not a constitutional lawyer. I am a lawyer, but I don't specialize in Fourteenth Amendment constitutional issues or and I don't, I'm certainly not an attorney that specializes in redistricting. However, the time that we've spent on it and we've looked at it, uh, he makes arguments there that are novel and I believe are meritorious. Um, but I'm not necessarily sure exactly how a court's going to rule on that. Well, let me, let me ask you this. I think the fact that you're not a constitutional lawyer is a plus for this conversation because I, I would like to hear your interpretation sort of as a, a layperson like we are. What is it about the maps that the governor thinks violates the 14th amendment in your perspective i mean ex explain that to well, in layman's well, terms i could tell you i mean i, I can't i'm certainly not gonna uh, i'm certainly not gonna jump into the mind of the governor and speak for him on this but what i'll tell you is that if we look at the two maps the 7503 um secondary map and the primary map the secondary map is similar to the last map that i saw uh, and that Representative uh, Skidmore saw in the Congressional uh, Redistricting Subcommittee, uh, where you have that what we call um, Congressional District 5 that spans pr pretty clearly across the state on the northern end of the state of Florida. That's the purple, because um, that, we're, kind of, we're kind of looking at it just so people are watching. It's, a, it's right. the purple band on the map on the left. Right, and, and that map, and, and I do agree that, that that map, that drawing of that district it does not comply with the general compactness standards that we we are addressing throughout the state. And, and as a matter of fact, in that last hearing where we were in that subcommittee uh, meeting, uh, 
Mr. Popper, who is uh, one of the people who put together this palsy popper compactness score, which is used around the country to determine whether districts are sufficiently compact and not necessarily gerrymandered, he came in and he testified and he indicated how the compactness score on that particular district, uh, CD5, was way lower than any other district in the state of Florida yeah. by leaps and bounds, yeah. as a matter of fact. Tom, and, let, me, let me, Jim, Tom, I, I beg your pardon, let me, let me, two yes, criteria. yes, Representative Skidmore, jump in here and, and, and respond. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and while there is a merit, obviously, for compactness, and that is a tier two requirement in the constitution. Tier one requirements include making sure that a district does not favor or disfavor a political party or an incumbent and does not reduce the ability and opportunity for minority and language minority populations to elect a candidate of their choice. Tier one supersedes tier two. Yeah, well, Always. well the two, as I understand it, it's very complex, but the two districts that are really at issue here are District 5 across the northern part of the state, which is represented by a black congressman. And then there is a new district in the center of the state where they're going to split up a district, and I believe it's the one that Congresswoman Val Demings has represented, and they're redrawing that district too. And the objection from you, is it not, Representative Skidmore, is that the power of black voters is going to be diminished here. That is what I believe, absolutely. And the Senate and the House disagreed on Congressional District 10. The Senate declared it to be a protected seat and the House did not. So clearly there was some disagreement as to whether um, it was, but there was never really any uh, detail that we were given or data that we were given to understand why one chamber would consider it protected and, and, uh, and the House would not. So. That is clearly a problem. So and wouldn't, the, wouldn't the, the data for that be, re, I mean, I probably could, could Google it right now to see who lives where. Well, how hard is that data to get? That data in and of itself, the census data and the formula that is used and um, some of the uh, uh, protected um, material and data that we were not able to see shows the full picture. So you can get some information and you can see um, in the information and the data that was provided during the subcommittee meetings, um, the performance of that district. But what we're being told to rely on is trends and that trending forward, those districts, um, particularly CD10, would not continue to be protected. And so therefore we can't protect it today, All right, which I disagree with. Representative, hold your thoughts, please. We're going to take a brief commercial break and we'll be back to talk more about redistricting. On This Week in South Florida, the topic du jour of the moment here is congressional redistricting. We're speaking with State Representative Tom Fabricio of Miramar and State Representative Kelly Skidmore of Boca Raton. Uh, Tom Fabricio, I've got to say, in uh, the way I read the legislature, uh, which is controlled by your party, there are very few things on which you, as Republicans, defied the governor. But on this matter, you essentially did. The governor wanted essentially 18 Republican congressional districts, you know, and 10 Democrats. You proposed 16 districts and 12 Democratic districts. So are you still defying the governor? Uh, it's an interesting way that you put that. Look, so the way I've explained redistricting to many people is you have data that comes from the census and we have law and we apply the data to the law. And we and one of the points that I've worked at looking at very closely is a compactness scale of them to avoid the necessarily the gerrymandering issues. So we've worked very uh, closely. and We've had robust discussion both at the subcommittee that I see it, sit on as well as on the floor uh, over all these issues. You know, I've been looking at the maps here this morning while we've been talking, and I think we're working towards having a great solution. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen when we get back up to Tallahassee. I anticipate that we're going to be called into the congressional subcommittee hearings and we're going to have more robust discussion over the application of that data to the law. 
And that's what the law, that's what uh, we're compelled to do as members of the Florida legislature. And we'll continue to do, to do that. And I imagine the governor does have the veto ability and that's part of the legislative process. So I, I expect that we're gonna come closer to having a solution that's equitable and agreeable to all Floridians. And once we get that, we're gonna get that passed and we're gonna go forward. You know, Kelly, to, to Tom's point, the rules say you can't, you can't consider party when drawing those lines, but you can consider census data. And the rules also say you sort of have to take into consideration, consideration not only minority race, but minority language. So that, that's a complicated calculation. But when you sit in those, in those committee meetings, do you discuss party at all? Not at all. Absolutely not. We never discussed that. Um, it is the, the congressional maps are exceedingly uh, challenging because unlike the legislative maps, every single district can only have a deviation of one person. So 28 districts have to be drawn with the exact same number of people, plus or minus just one person. So it is an exceedingly challenging job. And the, but the criteria are set in place for the cartographers to be able to do that. Uh, we, did, um, we did not do that uh, ourselves in committee. Yeah. That was done outside of the committee process, actually, and we were just presented the maps once they were drawn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Representative Skidmore, what is the likelihood that this is going to wind up in court, as indeed redistricting did 10 years ago, and then the Fair Districts Amendment to the Constitution was passed that says you can't gerrymander, but a court drew up most of these districts or all the districts 10 years ago. Are we going to do that again? We are likely to end up in court. There are currently two court challenges. Those were based on the impasse, however, um, due to the governor's uh, veto threat while we were in debate on the maps in the, in the Florida House. Um, those uh, lawsuits will most likely go forward, dis, you know, depending on what it is that we pass during the special session. If you read between the lines of the memo that the president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House sent out, the goal is to pass a map that the governor will sign. And we all understand that the only map the governor is going to sign is one that diminishes minority uh, opportunity to vote. All right. So it's, it's sounding to me, at least, like it's going to wind up in court, probably. Tom Fabricio, Kelly Skidmore, great to have you on today. We appreciate Thank it, you. and we'll see what happens and, up in Tallahassee. And just for the record, for those who can see, Representative Fabricio is shaking his head. So that'll be the last word. And <laughs> I, thank I, you I do believe, time. Kind of, I, I do believe we, that we, we are going to end up in court. We got it. We got to go. go. Tom, Promise you'll be back because this is pretty fascinating stuff, and, and TV is like that. But thank you so much, and, and we'll see you soon.